After signing with the Wilburn brothers, Loretta's enormous talents had blossomed, and her career had accelerated at a dizzying pace. By 1967, she was the Country Music Association's Female Vocalist of the Year. By the end of the decade, her popularity had surpassed all other female country singers. I think what set her apart that she would do songs that were a little risque, you know, ones called Raydedex or Wings Upon Your Horn, or, you know, things that, um, you know, a little bit different than just a straight ahead girl country song. But while Loretta's popularity was exploding, the Wilburn brothers were self destructing. In the late 60s, Doyle's excessive drinking was causing problems within the organization. Teddy, who had worked most closely with Loretta, left the act and moved to California. Late in 1970, Loretta realized she was being woefully mismanaged. She found herself at an agonizing crossroad. These men that she loved like brothers had made her career, but now they were killing it. Loretta informed Doyle Wilburn she was leaving the agency. The Wilburns promptly sued her for $5 million. The 20-year contract is a lifetime contract, they call it. And I signed five of them in one day. And I think three of them was with Dolan Teddy. Every woman in the history of country music who has gone out on her own has had to face a lawsuit. Look at Dolly Parton and Porter Wagoner. I mean, you, you, the examples are numerous. The lawsuit severed the relationship between the Wilburns and Loretta Lynn. The strong, almost familial bond that had grown up around the Wilburn brothers and the Lynns was a casualty of the litigation. No longer a side item in the Wilburn brothers' act, Loretta Lynn was now headlining her own tours. She was single-handedly bringing women out from under the shadow of the male superstars, proving that women were worthy of the same artistic and financial consideration as their male counterparts. There are three women who profoundly changed what it meant to be a female country star in our time. Loretta, Tammy Wynette, and Dolly Parton. And Loretta was first. By the end of the decade, she had won three National Songwriters Outstanding Achievement in Songwriting Awards. And throughout this whirlwind of activity, she was writing and singing about her own life with startling honesty. This award ain't some doing means of fighting mad. You don't need no more of what you've already had. Just was on the war path tonight. She was, by and large, writing these songs that were not only changing the face of country music for women, but changing the face of country music. Her fans were women and are women, and that's the way she likes it. That's who she's addressing. She's talking woman to woman, and that's really a breakthrough and really, really important. Appealing to women as much as she did, it was no accident that Loretta teamed up with one of country music's best-known heartthrobs. Former rock and roll star and teeny bopper icon, Conway Twitty. The collaboration charmed both critics and fans. Make him believe I'll spend my lifetime. The content of those duets was almost unfailingly sort of smoldering in lust kind of things, which, you know, that added a whole level of titillation to it because she really was a Conway Twitty fan before she ever met him. Mississippi man, we want it. <laughs> Loretta continued to win every award available to female country artists, but she remained a second-class citizen. Even though America was in the midst of a woman's movement, as women burned bras and took to the streets, demanding and receiving greater equality, the conservative country music establishment was slow to pick up on the trend. The highest honor in country music, the CMA Entertainer of the Year Award, was solely the dominion of men. No girl singer had ever won and few females had ever even been nominated. In 1972, Loretta was again nominated, but held out little hope that she or any other woman could win. Country Music Entertainer of the Year is Loretta Lynn. It was kind of like a dream. It was kind of like something that wasn't happening, but it was. She had no idea a woman could win that award. There is a certain sisterhood, a kind of sisterhood among the female performers. And when Loretta Lynn became the first woman to win Entertainer of the Year, I think you probably heard shouts of applause from every pair of lips that had lipstick on it in this town. Loretta continued to knock down doors with her accomplishments and her often strident songs about relationships. But the song that would ultimately define her was a simple, heartfelt tribute to her childhood a song that would change her life. Well, I was born to call my daughter In a cabin on a hill and put your heart Coal 
Steiner's daughter started a chain of events that would radically alter the public's perception of country music. After the success of the song, Loretta set out, with the help of journalist George Vesey, to write an autobiography that described her journey from Butcher Holler to Nashville. Her life story was so compelling that the book makes it onto the New York Times bestseller lists. That lifts her in the public consciousness. She starts doing the Car Johnny Carson show and everybody gets to see what, every, what we had already seen, which is this very funny, very neat lady, very feisty, very funny gal. It didn't take Hollywood long to cash in on the phenomenon. Just four years after the book, Coal Miner's Daughter was an Oscar-winning movie. But when Coal Miner's Daughter came out, my mother's success went from here to way out. I, I mean, it, it was amazing. I think the movie just really, you know, took Loretta into another plane. I've been there, especially after the movie came out, where women have walked up to my dad and just wanted to slap him in the face. How could you do that to such a lovely woman? I mean, how do you act like that? And, and all of this, and dad's like, yeah, it's a, it's a movie. But Coal Miner's Daughter was more than just a movie. It transformed Loretta into a national figure. She was in constant demand, a frequent guest on the most popular talk shows of the day. She recorded at least two albums a year and began touring relentlessly, expanding the popularity of country music throughout the world. A rising tide lifts all boats, and it was because of the success of Coal Miner's Daughter that country music really does take a leap forward in the public consciousness. The funny thing is, uh, in her words, the movie ended and it looked as if she had ridden off into the sunset with Dew, and of course that's not what happened. The rosy scenario painted at the end of the movie was indeed not what happened. Although her career was wildly successful, Loretta Lynn was entering one of the most trying periods of her personal life. The lawsuit that had begun in 1971 with the Wilburns finally came to trial. A broken-hearted Loretta was forced to take the stand against the people she loved. Through her tears, she recalled numerous incidents of Doyle's humiliating drunkenness while working on her behalf. When it was over, the shaken and weary Loretta Lynn had won her freedom. But for the Wilburns and others, the wounds would never heal. Doyle took it particularly hard. Never have I seen a broken man. He was crying. He, he, it hurt him because he loved her so much. And the whole family loved her. Mom Wilburn, she, she loved her just as much as Doyle and Teddy did. He never believed that it would go down and happen like that. Regardless of what transpired, it was a, a sad thing for friends to not still be friends. It just ended in a, in, a, in, a, in a wrong way. It had to go to court, and I don't think it needed to. I think it could have worked out. Loretta's most difficult trial, however, began in 1984, when her son, Jack, drowned while crossing a swollen river on horseback. He was the oldest son, the spitting image of his father, and in many ways, the child that Loretta felt most sentimental about. Jack Benny Lynn was 33 years old. The loss changed both Loretta and Doolittle forever. When they pulled my, my brother's body out of that river, somewhere on that creek bank, we lost a great deal of my dad. I mean, he, he was never the same. No, there was a big my, Our family was never the same. Everybody says, well, the horse kicked him. And I don't go for that. Never will. What do you think? I think somebody hit him and threw him in the water. Loretta definitely hasn't gotten over losing Jack. And I don't think anybody gets over losing their children in any way. With the lawsuit and the death of her son, Jack, Loretta Lynn had endured a devastating four years. But they would not compare to the pain of what was to come. And love is a foundation we lean on. Coming up, the battle that had raged for 40 years comes to a quiet end. And finally, I looked down at him and said, honey, um, you just go around the corner and I'll be okay. When CMT Inside Fame continues.